In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. My name is Father Malad Salim. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm the Dean of St. George Orthodox Cathedral. And I am uh, an old friend of Father Luke since our years together at seminary. I am an old friend with Subdeacon Christopher that you just took, which is a great blessing. Congratulations on both of them. Mm -hmm. Who else do we have here? We have a lot of young adults with us today who came together for a beautiful gathering for a conference that we host every other year. But this time we did it again just because we miss each other and we didn't want to go three years because of COVID, three years of not seeing one another. Because the next one that will come is in 2024. And so we came together as young adults from around the US and Canada, and we just dwelt together in the spirit of love, of harmony, of Christ's light that shines in the world and in our midst. My topic for those of you, how many of you I guess it's easy to, to look around and see that we're not with us. How many? Just so I know, like, how many people? All right, two people were not with us. The rest of you were with us for this conference? Come on. How many of you were not at the conference? All right, more hands. Okay, so about half and half. Half and half. For those of you who were not with us, my topic was the light of Christ illumines all. The light of Christ illumines all. You hear this line, when the priest turns around, he's standing here and he's doing the pre-sanctified liturgy and he comes out of the altar, he takes the light, he looks at the icon of Christ and he says, the light of Christ. He turns around to the people and he blesses them. <laughs> Illumines all. So now you have the light of Christ that you are seeing, you are reminded of this light that is given to you. Then I talked about the two different lights, the two different lights that we encounter. One is the physical light, the light that's coming out of these chandeliers, the light that's coming out of these candles that are lit. This is the physical light. This is the created light, the light that God created. He gave life into this world through this light. But then there is the uncreated light. This is the light that was not created because it is a person. And that is Christ Himself who said, I am the light of the world. But at the same time, He turns around and He says, you are the light of the world. He calls us to this higher calling. You are not just to be a parishioner. You are not just to be a husband or a wife, a sister, a brother, an uncle, a godfather. That's good. That's important. But you are to become the light of the world, the light that will give joy, the light that will give life, just like He is the light, just like He is the life. He brings us up to where He is, he makes us worthy to be called the light. As we reflected on all of this, I shared with everyone the need to take our call, this call to be the light of the world, seriously. And many of you will, for the young adults and, and the rest of you, you will go home. You will go home and you will return to your jobs, you will return to the issues that you've been dealing with, and. This has been a, a safe environment to be together where we can truly discuss our faith. But you will go back in places where you will feel uncomfortable sharing your faith. But you are called to be the light of the world. Not to be afraid, not to hide it under a bushel, but to set it up. At the time when Christ said, you are the light of the world, don't let this light be hidden because no one would do that. They would put it up so that people would be able to see. At the time when he was saying this, they didn't have beautiful chandeliers, right? 
They didn't have all of that. But they lit the lamp and they set it as high as they can reach. For me, it wouldn't be too high, but enough for you to see when you come into my home. And then you walked in and you were able to see. It would not be wise, it would be foolish to light that lamp and put it somewhere underneath. It would not serve its purpose. It would be useless. You are the light of the world. You have a purpose. Don't be useless. As you leave this church today and you return to your homes, you return to your jobs and your relationships, you will be challenged to take this light that you are and hide it under a bench or somewhere where people would not benefit from that light. But you are called to go out there and truly proclaim the joy of this light. You are called to sainthood. Don't forget that I said that a lot yesterday. You were called to be saints. Not just a husband and a wife, a brother or a sister. You are called to be saints. And I said to you, I'm working so hard and I keep coming short, but I will keep on working on becoming Saint Milan. And if I don't tell myself that, then I will be lazy and I will keep my light hidden. But my calling is higher than just being a person standing in front of you in these vestments. I am the light of Christ, just like you are the light of Christ. And so take this call seriously. Take your call to be holy seriously. Sometimes we think we are not capable. Look around you, besides Him. Look around you. Look at the icons of these prophets and the saints beautifully adorning this church. Beautiful. They were people like me and you, but they took their call to be the light of the world seriously. You do your job, and He will glorify you. You do you, I said, and He will do what He does. Your job is to be that light. Don't be afraid to proclaim the Gospel. Last week in the Gospel reading that we read, He healed the paralytic. That was last week. This week He heals the blind. You may not be able to heal the paralytic. You may not be able to heal the blind. Your shadow might not be good enough for someone to just merely be in front of that they would be healed. That may not be you. That may never be you. You may not be a miracle worker. But that doesn't mean you cannot be holy. That does not mean you cannot sanctify your life. You do you. And let Him do what He does. So brothers and sisters in Christ on this day, I challenge all of us, especially our young adults who were together and are leaving, and then the rest of us. As you leave this church today, realize that your calling to be the light of the world is a high call. It's not something that you should just ignore. Serve your church. Serve one another. Love one another. That's how you become in His likeness. Do those things and you will have an icon on these walls. You will. And if it's not recognized by the church, your icon will be in the kingdom of God. If you take your job to love, to serve, to worship, to give God the glory for all things, you do those things and you too will have an icon because you are already an icon. Perhaps tarnished a little bit from time to time. But you are created in God's image. The perfect icon. That's you. That's me. We forget about all of that. But we are called to be that perfect image of God. May you take this call. May you take it home with you and renew your commitment to Christ to be His true image in this fallen world. Amen.